Hi Purposeful Clan, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Purpose with Martha. My name is Martha. I'm a Namibian YouTuber. I vlog about faith, ministry, and lifestyle. So guys, today I will be a guest speaker for um, a co virtual conference. Um, and the topic for tonight is pain before purpose. So I'm super excited. I hope you guys stay tuned. Um, I'll be from the Woman of God from the Netherlands, like I told you in the last video. So I hope you guys stay tuned. Obviously, you guys will be with me throughout the whole video. And I hope that inspires you, this video transforms you, this video um, touches someone or, um, you know, word in season for someone. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. And yeah, stay tuned, guys. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, woman of God. I'm grateful for your life. I thank God for you. I thank God for your tenacity. I thank God for what you're doing for the kingdom. I thank God for your ministry and that of your husband. I believe that God will continue to elevate you. God will continue to use you as an instrument for this generation. Thank you, everyone that is joining. God bless you. God bless you. Please don't forget to share this broadcast. You don't start without the word of God. And as you're holding your Bible, I just want you to pray with me. And I want you to declare and say, I will be what this word says I will be. I will become I what... I will be what this word says I will be. I will be. Genesis chapter 37 verse 23. I will read as, as the Spirit leads. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the richly ornamented robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the cistern. Now the cistern was empty. There was no water in it. Child of God, the Bible here talks about a man, and I know many of you may be wondering, but woman of God, we want you to get to the preaching. The Bible talks about a man called Joseph, a man that went through the process, a man that was innocent. The Bible talks about Joseph being a 17-year-old boy, and yet people hated him, and he had no reason why they hated him. The Bible says his father, he was one of his father's favorites, and as, as his father gifted him this ornament or this robe, this richly robe with many colors. The Bible says his brothers had hated him so much. I've come to talk to somebody here tonight wondering how is it that people hate me so much? Why am I going through a, a process of so much hatred? Why am I going through a process of people rejecting me? Why am I going through a process of people saying all sorts of things against me? The Bible talks of a young man that was innocent child of God. He woke up one day. He didn't ask God to use him. He didn't ask God to raise him him he just woke up one day and God decided to do it and the Bible says his brothers hated him and mind you the brothers didn't hate him at the beginning the Bible says the brothers hated him more than the father had loved him so meaning there was already hatred and jealousy from his brothers I want to talk to someone right now that is feeling so worthless feeling that they are unloved feeling that they are rejected the Bible talks of Joseph and as he was taken to Egypt. Am I talking to somebody? He didn't know that God was taking him to his promise. God was taking him to his, pro, pro, um, to, his, to his promise, which was his purpose. I've come to talk to somebody here today that is going through the process. The process is ugly. The process is full of rejection. The process is full of accusation. The process is full of so much envy the process comes with so much persecution child of god you may be like joseph right now wondering why is it i didn't ask anybody to love me i want to talk to you about this young man that this man persevered regardless of the situation i love what the bible says the bible says that he was sold sold by his own brothers sold to a point that he went to work as a mere slave for somebody but because God was with him child of God because God favored him God favored him to a point that he found favor wherever he went I've come to talk to someone that is feeling like they are being rejected in this world right now somebody hate me I've come to tell you that there is something that you are holding there is something special in you and you've got to understand that before you get to your purpose you've got to go through this pain and I'm not saying it to make you feel better there is no great man in the Bible that did not go through the process. 
I want you to type in if you're listening to this and just say, I am ready. I am listening, woman of God. Nobody, no great man in the Bible that God raised didn't go through the process. I've come to tell you about that young man called Joseph. The Bible said he went into Potiphar's house. Just maybe, I'm, I'm wondering now what even his brothers were thinking. His brothers were po- probably mocking him and saying, yes, we knew it. Now he's working as a slave. But the Bible says God was with this man. I've come to talk to you that if God is with you, regardless of this pain that you're going through, you will never fail. I want you to turn into the book of Genesis chapter 37 verse 23. The Bible says that this young man was sold by his own brothers. As he went into Potiphar's house, he was working as a mere slave. But because God was with him, he was promoted. And because God was with him, he was promoted. I don't know if someone is going through a season of rejection right now. I don't know if somebody is going through a season where they feel that God is not there. They feel that God is not listening to their prayers. They feel that God is not with them because they are going through so many accusations. I've come to tell you, child of God, I've not seen a great man or a great woman that didn't go through the process. I've come to tell you that Joseph had to go through the process before he went to the promise. As Joseph went into Potiphar's house, he was taken to prison, which took him to become prime minister. I've come to tell you that every process you are going through is elevating you to your place of destination. Every process that you are going through is taking you to your place of elevation. I've known a woman that was called Hannah. She was mocked by Penina, but Penina had everything that Hannah didn't. Hannah had nothing, but Penina had everything. I've come to talk to someone wondering, how is it that these people hate me and I'm even, I don't have a job. I don't have money, but people hate me. Woman of God, I don't have anything to say maybe I have anything but people envy me listen to me child of God Hannah was hated for no reason Hannah was hated for no reason are you listening to me? Penina hated a woman that had an adva- that she had an advantage over. The Bible says Penina had children, Hannah had none. Yet Penina still hated her. You know why? Because the Bible says that the husband had loved Hannah more. Yet Penina had something Hannah didn't. I've come to tell you somebody that is wondering, how is it that people hate me yet sometimes these people have more than me? I've come to tell you that in order to get to your promise, you will meet different types of people that will say all sorts of things against you. People that will have accusations. Joseph was hated for no reason. I don't see any man that was not called any sort of names. I've come to tell you a man that was called Moses in the Bible. The Bible says Moses was called a murderer, yet God called him to go save the Israelites. I don't know what name people have called you, child of God, but I've come to tell you that in this journey called life, you are going to go through pain before purpose. Am I speaking to someone? I want you to type in, if you're listening to me now, say pain before purpose. I don't want you to ever, ever think that that pain is meant to bring you down. I don't want you to ever think that that process is meant to bring you down. No, God is working on your character. I want you to turn your books into the book of Hebrews. Don't worry, I'm going to tell you the process of becoming a young woman in ministry, a process of becoming young and serving God. I want you to turn your Bibles into the book of Hebrews. Chapter, I want you to turn your into chapter number, chapter 10, verse 35, verse 36, sorry. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36 i'll read as the i'll read you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of god you will receive what he has promised the bible is talking about you persevering persevering in that pain that you're going through what are you going through is it joblessness is it unemployment is it rejection is it accusation what are you going through are you going through a process where you want to commit suicide where you feel like the same people you thought loved you have turned their backs on you i've come to tell you child of god that there is no great man that god elevated that did not go through the pain there is no man that god elevated that did not go through the process i tell you of a young man that was called david when the bible says when prophet samuel came to anoint his brothers he was the least regarded the bible says all his brothers were called except him but god decided to call him wherever he was I've come to talk to someone that is feeling outnumbered. Somebody that is feeling that wherever they go, they are always sidelined. They are never taken into consideration. I've come to tell you that you've got to go through the pain before you get to the promise. Am I speaking to somebody? You've got to go into that pain before you get to the purpose. Because you've got to have a testimony. I don't know if I'm talking to someone right now, but every scar is supposed to be a testimony. There are some people that are going through so much right now, they don't understand that every scar they have is meant to be a testimony to show that it's possible. Don't let the enemy condemn you and tell you who you are not. 
God wants to take you to your purpose, but you've got to understand that you need to go through the pain. And that pain is not, that scar is not meant to break you. It's not meant to bring you down, no. It's meant to elevate you. It's meant to speed you to where you're supposed to go. So I've come to talk to a young man. I've come to talk to a young woman. I've come to talk to an older woman that is going through rejection right now, that is going through accusation right now, that doesn't know what's happening in their lives. I've come to talk to somebody that may be listening to this broadcast, crying because they are asking for something. But God, why is it delaying? Somebody that is going through so much and they are smiling on the outside, but deep inside they are paining on the inside. I've come to tell you that every great person you are seeing today went through pain. Pain. Every great person you are seeing seated here today went through pain before they went to their purpose. Don't ever undermine your process. Don't undermine that pain that you're going through. I went through a season when I started ministry. You know when you're young, everyone feels, mm, how is this person going to serve God? She's young. They always use that word. She's too young. She's too old. But I believe that God called a young man like Joseph who was 17 years old. Are you speaking to me? God called a young man that was 17 years old, took him and so, and imagine being sold as a slave at the age of 17, going to work as a slave at the age of 17, God elevating you. I don't know what age he went to become prime minister, but I know that God used that man while he was young. I know the young man that was sidelined like David. The Bible says while his brothers were called because the prophet came to the house, he was sidelined because he was too young. Yet this young man became king. I've come to talk to somebody that God does not look at age. God is not a respecter of man. Are you listening to me? God doesn't, God is not moving to the standards of men. No, God is God. And whatever you're going through today, do not ever feel like people, never allow people to pull you down. If years back I allow people to tell me I'm young, I would not be here today. If people told me, no, she's too young, she's 25 years old, how is she going to preach the gospel? I would not be preaching to you today. By the grace of God, I've traveled to different ministries by the grace of God and we give God all the glory because it's only him that can take the glory. Because of his name and not my name. I've come to tell you that your age doesn't matter. You may be 17, you may be 18, you may be 19, you may be 23, but God wants to use you. He doesn't care your past. He doesn't care about your past. He doesn't care about the family you've come from. He doesn't care where you work. He doesn't care how much you make. God wants to use you. The Bible talks of a young man called David while he's in battlefield, his own elder brother, Reuben. The Bible says his brother got so much angry and asked him, what are you even doing here? Go back. <laughs> I see somebody saying, I think this message is for me only. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, I see some people joining. God bless you as you're joining. God bless you. The Bible says as David is at the battlefield about to kill Goliath, his own blood, Reuben, got so angry. What spirit of anger is that one? They got to him. The Bible said he got so angry, he reminded him and said, go and tend the sheep. What are you doing here? You like things. <laughs> I've come to talk to someone here today that you may be at the process of your breakthrough reminding you of who you are not and there are people reminding you of what you cannot do there is that voice that is telling you of what you cannot achieve like Reuben while David was at the battlefield about to take over Goliath his bigger brother is telling him that he cannot do it but I tell you something child of God David had no skill David had no experience his brothers were soldiers and he was not he just tended sheep are you listening to me? Yet he could kill what thousands of men could not kill. Am I talking to somebody here tonight? Am I talking to someone that is listening to me? There's a blessing. Someone is saying, there's a blessing in every lesson and lesson in every blessing. I don't know what you're going through. And if you are under the influence of my voice, don't allow people to tell you or to tell you what you're not. Don't allow people to bring you down because of the standards of the world. Don't allow people to tell you because of their experiences. So they want to remind you of what you cannot do, child of God. God can raise you. God can use you regardless of your age, regardless of your past, regardless of where you come. Said you are, whatever they said you will be you will rise for the glory of God you will preach Christ and I'm going to tell you now people are going to expect you to fail there are people that are going to sit waiting for you to start saying you are afraid I've come to tell you child of God time is running the clock is ticking Christ is coming don't be moved by what people are saying because people were limited a couple years ago if I had to listen to what people were saying I would not be here today you know being young a young woman for that matter in ministry is very tough it comes with a lot. People want you to follow a certain doctrine, a certain way, a certain word. But I want to tell you that Christ, 
let christ have the final say humility will take you far i don't know if i'm talking to you but i tell you humility will take you far the bible says the prayer of a righteous man is effective i don't know what you're going through right now and you may be listening to me and you want god to use you you have a zeal to save god you have hunger to serve god but there's always that second voice that is telling you you cannot that second voice reminding you of what you have done in or when you were when you were murderer like moses moses was a murderer they told him what are you coming to tell us here you you murdered people you murderer yet god called that murderer to go save his people what are you called today what names have people called you david was called that he was david reuben made david look annoying he was he was he was he was made to look like he was annoying yet he killed the giant that nobody else could kill what are you going through today if you are listening to this broadcast I, it doesn't matter your age it doesn't matter what you have been through you will strive through but you've got to be your biggest cheerleader there were times where nobody could cheer me on but only god cheered me on and here we are today preaching christ here we are today traveling for jesus christ here we are impacting young people here we are what are you going through don't allow anybody to tell you that you are a woman so you cannot be in ministry don't allow anybody to tell you because you are young you cannot be in ministry jesus in your life you need humility you need that if you are going through that unforgiveness you've got to let go of all that unforgiveness and bitterness whoever said anything to you you've got to let it go you have got to say, and I'm praying for someone, I'm going to pray for someone right now that wants to get into their purpose and into their promise. I'm going to pray for you. You've got to let go of all the voices that people told you. You've got to let go of all that unforgiveness that you're holding, all those grudges, if they expected you to fail you. So stop expecting people to clap hands for you because God did not speak to them about your purpose. The reason why God speaks to you and you alone about your purpose is because he knows that he's the only one that is supposed to, be, to keep that role bowling. He's the only one that is supposed to be holding that steering wheel in your life. The problem with us today is that we expect people to clap hands for us. We expect people to be our, God, our cheerleaders. But we don't understand that when God speaks to you about your assignment, he speaks to you to you alone. Stop expecting people to clap hands for you and to believe in you. They won't because God didn't speak to them about it. Are you, are, you, are you listening to me? I want to speak to someone here today that stop expecting people to support you. I've seen so many young people saying the same thing. No, nobody believed in me. You don't need anybody to believe in you. If people believed in me in the past, I don't know where I would be today. I would really thank God, but nobody believed in me, honestly. Only very few people believed in me. And those are the same people that are sticking around today. So I tell you today, nobody's going to believe in you, but they will respect you when you get to your promise. Believe me, they will not ignore it. When you get to your... Are you listening to me? Joseph's brothers could not ignore him because he had the key to their lives. The Bible said they had to go back. They were hit by famine and the only person that had the key was their brothers. I don't rejected you. God is giving you a key. Not a key to their life, but a key to a certain level that only you can be able to enable them to get to. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but God is trusting you to take somebody to a new dimension. God is trusting you to be a voice to someone. There is somebody right now that may want to be committing suicide. You could be their hope. But because you have listened to the second voice, you are no longer serving God because you are allowing people to discourage you. I don't know who you are today, but I've come to tell you that there is no great person here today that didn't. Jesus Christ himself was mocked while he's on the cross, hanging. They said, but we thought you were the Christ. He went through pain before he got to the purpose. He went through pain before he fulfilled the purpose that God enabled him to come on earth to do. If Jesus had to go through pain, who are you and I not to go through the pain? Are you listening to me, somebody? I don't know what you're going through, but don't allow people, stop expecting people to be your greatest cheerleaders. Stop expecting people to clap hands for you. Stop expecting people to tell you, oh, you are beautiful. Oh, you are great. Oh, you are what? So the only, the problem with us today is that we want people to push us. We want people to hype us up. No, the only support system that you have that is permanent is the word of God. You need God in your life, child of God. He is your greatest. I call him Jehovah Tzikenu. In Hebrew, it means sedek, the God that is rigid and that is straight. It means God does not speak a word and not fulfill it. It means God does not lie. It means that God will never speak something and he divided the Red Sea. A man that was called a murderer divided the Red Sea. I've come to tell you something.